This screencast covers the material in Module 1, Lesson 1, and it talks about uh, the relationship of various place values on a place value chart and how they relate to each other. We look at the word here, adjacent. Adjacent just simply means next to. So we're going to look at the value, uh, the relationship between the values of adjacent places in a place value chart. Let's get started. Okay, let's get started. It says use the place value chart and arrows to show how the value of the each digit, that doesn't make sense, of each digit changes. The first one has been done for you. Well, let's take a look at the place value chart first and fill in some values. Each one of these places, and I'm going to use this laser pointer, but this new version here is a little bit odd. It doesn't appear where I can point. Each one of these is a place in our place value system. I'll label them for you. So first we start with one thousandth, then we have one tenth, or one hundredth rather, one tenth. Now we've uh, gone across the decimal and we have a one and ten and one hundred and a thousand. Okay, not the neatest, but there they are. So um, let's just talk about some relationships here. If we look at this, if I have ten one thousandths, I have ten one thousandths, and I can exchange that for one one hundredth. So if I have ten one thousandths, I have one one hundredth. And let's make a, a, a kind of a comparison to currency here. So these are the hundredths. Those are pennies, right? If I have ten pennies, I can exchange them for a dime, which is one tenth of a cent of a dollar, rather. If I have 10 dimes, I can change that for a $1 bill. If I have 10 $1 bills, I can exchange them for a $10 bill. If I have 10 $100 bills, I, or 10 $10 bills, I can exchange it for a 100. And again, if I have 10 100s, I can exchange that for a 1,000. And we should know this. This is uh, not real new, but we want to really make this a, a strong concept for you because it, it figures prominently throughout the year. All right. So what did we do here? Well, take a quick look. And when I had my two thousandths, I multiplied it by 10. I now have 20 thousandths. And if I have 20 thousandths, I can trade that for two hundredths, okay? And then the next one's a little simpler, right? I have five of these pennies, and I'm going to multiply my five pennies times ten. So now I have fifty pennies. If I have fifty pennies, I can trade that for five dimes. I have fifty cents. Continuing, if I have four dimes and I multiply it times ten, I now have forty dimes, and that would be dollars. And if I have three ones and I multiply it times ten, I now have three tens. Pretty simple. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Now the next one, we're multiplying by 100. Okay, so we have to think of what's going on here. Well, if we go one place to the left, that's a change of times ten. If I go two places, that's 10 times 10. 10 times 10 is 100. So 10 times 10 equals 100. That gives us two tens or two places. So let's put, uh, boy, I'm getting used to the stylus places. Okay, so let's put in our original number. I have three in the ones, four in the tenths, five in the hundredths, two in the thousandths. Now I need to move them each over two places, right? So I'm going to go and put my arrow in, and two thousandths. If I have two hundred thousandths, I now have two tenths. Here I have five pennies, right? I multiply that times 100. I now have 500 pennies. 500 pennies is the same as $5. I have four dimes, and now I have 400 dimes. That means I have $40. And I have three ones times 100. I now have three 
hundreds. Let's go on to the last example. And again, this one, is, this time we're multiplying it by 1,000. So again, we have 10 times 10 times 10 equals 1,000. So think, how many places are we going to have to move to the left? Well, since each one of these places represents times 10, that's times 10 times 10, that's 100, times 10 is 1,000. So let's write in our number. 3 in the ones, 4 in the tenths, 5 in the hundredths, and 2 in the thousandths. So we're moving these over each three places. So I have 2,000, 2,000 one thousandths. Kind of makes sense, right? If I have two thousands, one thousandths, I must have two. Okay, now I have five thousand pennies. If I have five thousand pennies, I have fifty dollars. I have four thousand dimes, and that would be four hundred dollars. And I have three thousand dollar bills, which is the same as three thousands. Okay, let's go on and explain how and why the value of 5 has changed in A, B, C, and C. Okay, I moved things up a little bit. Uh, ideally, we could see everything, but what do we do with uh, A, right? We can, and I'm not going to write this all out because my handwriting here is slow and sloppy. A, it, sh it went from the what? The 5 was in the hundredths place to the tenths place because, why? Because I multiplied by 10. And that means move one place. B. Again, I'm not going to write into it, but we go from the hundredths to not the tenths this time. We go to the ones. And of course, now we're multiplying by 10. So when we go from uh, the hundredths and multiply it by 10, we now go to the ones place. So instead of writing the one tenth, we're going to say uh, ones, and uh, it's multiplying by 100, and that means move two places. And likewise with C. We go from the hundredths place to the tens place because we multiplied by not ten but a thousand, and that means we move two decimal places. Going on to problem two, we have something similar, except this time we're talking about division. The places are the same. I'm just going to point them out. And we have our one thousandths, our one hundredths, our one tenths, ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, right? We don't need to write that in. We should know that the decimal point tells us where our places are. It's a good reference point. That's exactly what it's for. It says use the place value chart and arrows to show how the value of each digit changes. The first one has been done for you. Okay, this time we're dividing and not multiplying. So instead of going to the left, we're shifting to the right. Why is that? Okay, well, suppose I have $300, and I have uh, one-tenth of $300. How much would I have? Well, that would be $30. Or suppose I had $40, and I had one-tenth of $40. Well, that would be $4. And if I had $5, and I had one-tenth of that, I'd have 50 cents. So when we're dividing by 10... It's the same as one-tenth of, and that's a very important uh, concept. I'm going to write that down here. And you don't have to commit this right now, but it's an important lesson over the course of the fifth grade. Divided by ten is the same as multiplying by one-tenth. If I divide by ten, I end up with one-tenth. So again, each place is one-tenth. one a uh, tenth of hundreds is tens, one tenth of tens is ones, one tenth of ones is tenths. Let's go on to the next one. Well, we have the same number, so let's write it in. 345 
we're going to divide it by 100. Well, it's real easy if we look at this. If I have $300, I have one hundredth of $300. I'm going to have $3. And we can see that, once again, we're moving over how many places? We're moving over two. So let's just select another color here, because when I go one place, I'm going uh, dividing by 10. I go two places, I'm dividing by 100. So I put my 3 in the 1's place, likewise with the 4 in the 10's place. That becomes 4 in the 10th's place. And finally, I have 5 in the 1's place. That becomes 5 in the 100th's place, right? Because let's think about this in terms of money again. 1 tenth or 100th of $5 is 5 cents. And, okay, the next one, we have a 1,000 here. How many places do you think we're going to have to move it? Well, again, let's put in our number, 345. And we're going to have to move, I'm just going to show you, we're going to go uh, divide by 10. We're going to divide by 10 a second time, that's divided by 100. Divide by 10 a third time, that's the same as dividing by 1,000. So in this case, we're moving three places. And our resultant number is three and 345 thousandths. So again, let's go over these. We 345 divided by 10 is 34 and 5 tenths. 345 divided by 100 is 3 and 45 hundredths. 345 divided by 1,000 is 354 thousandths. Now, uh, Part D explain why the values change. And again, like we did in the previous slide, we can talk about how many places we have to move when we uh, our digits when we uh, divide by 10, divide by 100, divide by thousands. And this time we're referring to the 4. So think about that. Talk about where the 4 started and where the 4 ended up and why that change occurred. Okay, let's read this. A manufacturer made 7,234 boxes of coffee stirrers. If each box contains 1,000 stirrers, how many stirrers did they make? Explain your thinking and include a statement of the solution. Okay, one thing I did here is I uh, brought in a chart here. And a good thing to do with these problems, especially as we're getting started, is to build a place value chart. I did this just to save time and so you didn't have to sit there and watch my sloppy handwriting. Okay, so let's take our original number, 7,234. 7 in the thousands, 2 in the hundreds, 3 in the tens, and 4 in the ones. So if each box, one box contains a thousand. Well, are we going to have more stirs or we're going to have more boxes? Well, if each box has a thousand stirs, we're going to have more stirs. Now let's think about how many places we're going to have to move this. Remember, if I move my digits one place, that's multiplying by one. If I multiply it two places, that's multiplying by 10 times 10, that's 100. If I go three places, that's 10 times 10 times 10, and that's 1,000. So I'm going to make my arrow here. And uh, the 7 in the thousands place, well, I have 7,000 thousands, and that becomes 7 millions. We do the same thing with each one of these places. Two hundreds becomes two thousand hundreds, and so on as we move down our values here because three, uh, I already I drew the arrow there, the three tens becomes three ten thousands. That kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Tens becomes ten thousands when we multiply it by a thousand. And four ones times one thousand becomes four thousands. Now we got these empty places here. We need to put in placeholders, zeros, in order to show that uh, what place these digits are in. So one way you can explain your thinking is to draw the diagram. And after you di draw the diagram, think about what you did to create the diagram and move the digits. And then, of course, give, me, give your teacher some, uh, a few sentences to describe what happened. And a statement of the solution. Okay. 
they had how many stirrers? They made seven million two hundred thirty four thousand stirrers. Good habit to write that out into a sentence. Number four, a student used his place value chart to show a number. After the teacher instructed him to multiply his number by ten, the chart showed three thousand two hundred and four tenths. Draw a picture of what the place value chart looked at like at first. Then it says explain how you decided what to draw on your place value chart. Be sure to include your reasoning about how the value of each digit was affected by the multiplication. Use words, pictures, or numbers. Well, I, I inserted another one of these place value charts here because uh, this one has an upper and a lower section. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to put in the number we uh, ended up with and I'm going to do a little thinking about what we started with. So let's enter those digits. Three in the thousands, two in the hundreds, hundreds rather, and zero in the tens, zero in the ones, and four tenths. Now, what did we do? We took a number, and that number is up here, and we multiplied it by ten. Well, if we look at the second slide where we talked about multiplication, if we multiplied by ten, what did we do? We moved everything over one place to the left. So we need to have to think backwards now. So if I have three in the thousands place, what did I what did I multiply? Where was that three before I multiplied by ten? Well, if you guessed hundreds, that's correct. So that shows that. And we have two in the tens place in our zero and our zero and our four. Okay, so using this diagram makes it pretty easy to figure out what happened. We don't know the original number. We know the final number. And in some ways, what we almost have to do is the inverse operation. So we're ending up with a, uh, starting out with a smaller number than we ended up with because we multiplied it by 10. So to finally answer that, of course, you're going to have to use some words. But using the diagram is, is a very good tool. Is we're going to put our original number in there. And that original number is 320 and 4 hundredths. Once again, I inserted a diagram to help us with this problem. And it would not be a bad idea for you to do the same. One, it shows your thinking using a diagram, but also it gives you a good basis for writing a few sentences about what you did. You just think about what you did when you set up and completed the diagram. A microscope has a setting that magnifies an object so that it appears 100 times, 100 times as large as when viewed through the eyepiece. If a tiny insect is 95,000 centimeters long, how long will the insect appear in centimeters through the microscope? Explain how you know. Well, let's write our original value. So our tiny insect. is 95 hundredths of a centimeter. So that gives uh, zero in the tenths, nine in the hundredths, and five in the thousands. And we're going to be a hundred times as large. Well, that tells us what to do right there. When we see a hundred times, we multiply. And again, remember, since it's 100, we have to move not one space, but two spaces to the greater value. So five thousandths becomes five tenths. Nine hundredths, I have nine hundred hundredths, that is nine. We'll put our decimal in there. And of course we can fill the rest of these places with zeros. We don't really need to. We don't we have the nine in the ones place. There's no values between the ones and the decimal point, but we could fill those in. And the answer is 9 and 5 tenths. 9 and 5 tenths centimeters long. Again, we should provide a statement. I verbally outlined that. Creating a diagram is helpful in making your statement and also proving evidence of your thinking. And of course, how we should also make a statement. The insect will 
up here to be 9 and 5 tenths centimeters long. Okay, that's our first uh, module lesson of the year, and uh, hopefully this is helpful to you in completing your homework. Uh, these problems pretty much correspond very closely to what you'll see in your homework.